Yes, sister, most welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. I'm asking from the perspective of a teenager. Today it's very common to have people so called falling in love. And um, I would like to know that how do I convince my Muslim friends who have so called fallen in love to go about and how to refrain from falling into the vices of staring and stuff like that. And the second question is that uh, if the girl or guy is virtuous, then how should I ask them to go about? Krishna has a question that now it's common amongst teenagers and among the friends that they fall in love. So how can she convince that falling in love is wrong? And what if the girl and boy are virtuous? Correct? That's the question. Yeah, I mean if the girl likes the guy and the guy is virtuous, so the guy likes the girl and the girl is virtuous. Without you realize... haram activity, without haram activity, that is telling or anything like that. Just liking the girl for her character, modesty and stuff like that. First thing that normally when teenagers fall in love, normal style, so how can you convince it's wrong? And on the other hand, if they are virtuous, then is it allowed without staring, without haram, is it allowed or not? First, the general category of falling in love, how does it come about? It comes about by breaking the hijab level. It's not like that, you know, sometimes wonder, why have this girl chosen this boy? The boy is so ugly. And so, oh, oh, this girl, this girl is so ugly. So it is when you talk, you know, you start liking things, it may be weird. So therefore, interaction, too much unnecessary interaction between the opposite sex is to be prevented. Not that you can't speak, but if you speak to opposite sex, you have to lower your gaze. So all these things happen because of not following the hijab level. Maybe the girl is not wearing the proper clothes, Islamic clothes, or the boy is not wearing. Or maybe they're wearing Islamic clothes, but the clothes per se is not only hijab. That is one aspect of hijab, the extent. The extent should be loose, it should not be glamorous, it should not resemble the opposite sex, it should not resemble the non-Muslim. Besides the clothes, the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you behave, the way you think, all this comes into hijab. Just by wearing a clothing hijab, and if you don't talk properly, how are you? Very good. There should not be too much compassion. So automatic, whether you are wearing hijab, you know, how are you? There's so much of depth and so much of modulation and so much of love in the voice. The talking is not Islamic. That doesn't have to be stern always. have to be normal. Same thing the way you walk. You may wear a hijab and you may not walk properly. The way you think. You may wear a hijab and you may, you may stare and you may think. Whatever it is, you know, there's bird watching going on in schools and colleges. So talking, walking, thinking, heart, niyat, everything put together. So when the hijab is broken in any of these aspects, there are high chances that infatuation will come. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, almighty God has made us. If you keep on talking, opposite sex and nothing happens to you, then you're a psychiatrist. If you keep on talking often to an opposite sex and you say, you know, I talk but nothing happens to me, then you require a psychiatrist. <laughs> something has to happen. Or there's something wrong with you. <laughs> ah, if you follow Islamic principle, lowering the gaze, saying to it be in the hijab level, then nothing happens, that is fine. Then you're not a normal human being. <laughs> if you keep on talking, hello, hi, you know, shaking hands, coming, pinching, everything goes on. So these things, that's the reason then you fall in love. No, in these cases, in colleges and schools, the criteria for love is far away from the Islamic criteria. 99.9% it is not virtue. If it was virtue, one of them would have stopped. Huh, maybe he is virtuous, but not very virtuous, but Alhamdulillah better than the others, and yet he may fall in love. That's possible. He may not be able to tempt the feeling. If the hijab, the girl or the boy has a little bit lowered, and they get into that infatuation, attraction, and yet they may be virtuous, but not totally. There's nothing like love before wedding in this sort of cases. So there's nothing like LBW, you know, LBW you have in cricket. Nothing like love before wedding in Islam. <laughs> Therefore, I always say, it is more important to love the girl you marry than to marry the girl you love. It is more important to love the girl you marry than marry the girl you love. You know, we have these Romeo and Juliet, Laila Majnu, Shiri Farad, and people say that if Laila Majnu or Romeo Juliet would have married, they have come to know what is the problem they would have had in married life. <laughs> so it's always more important to love the girl you marry than to marry the girl you love. Now coming to the second scenario, my sister has asked that there's a girl and a boy. Both of them are Islamic, both of them are virtue, but they fall in love. One side, two sides, she didn't say. One side. One side. Two sides is difficult, no? 
the virtue. So she'll take it on the one side, falling in love with the person, and the thing is there that Islamic, is it allowed? So if a person is a virtuous girl, she is not breaking any rules of the hijab. She is following all the hijab rules, talking, walking, everything, alhamdulillah. But she knows of a person who is also virtuous. And she has fallen in love. Is it accepted? It is accepted. Accepted that she desires to marry a boy who she knows of, who is Islamic, is accepted. But it is not the love that you have in today's age. That is one-sided. The best is if she knows that she should propose. Simple. She should propose Islamically. Maybe through a brother, through a father, through an uncle. Send the proposal. So if she's fallen in love, fine. That should not stay for long. Fine. As you said, teenage. Fine, teenage also no problem. On the higher side of the teen, no problem. Propose. Send the proposal. Don't wait for too long. You may never know. You may break the barrier of hijab. Now she's Islamic. She's not done anything wrong. She's fallen in love. Propose Islamically. If you don't propose, then there may be problems. You may not be able to maintain your hijab level. So she sends the proposal. And then if she's also Islamic and he also wants Islamic girl, everything goes fine. If it doesn't, then leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then if she's Islamic and if he has rejected her, then she should try and find someone who's more Islamic or less Islamic who likes her. So Islamically, if she likes someone on the basis of Quran and Sunnah, because he's virtuous, no problem, accept it. She has not breaking law of the Sharia. She should send the proposal as soon as possible. Don't wait. Send the proposal Islamically. Then we can have a meeting, have a talk, have a chat. If he accepts, Alhamdulillah. If he doesn't accept, no problem. She finds someone else and he finds someone else. Hope that's the question. And point number two is that the punishment for a Muslim who wants to come out of Islam, God forbid, is death punishment.